Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the time machine. I am Harper and whoa, I've been away from the YouTubes for a few weeks, but it was for good reason. I've been working on something pretty sweet, a 30 day challenge, and I did it all for you. <laughs> Not really, that's a lie. I did it for me. And speaking of me, let's get back to me. This is part one in a four part video series called how to draw better in only one hour. That's right, friends. You'll get better at drawing and painting in only one hour or your money back. Guaranteed. But here's the fine print. Damn it all to hell. I knew there was a catch. <sighs> You've got to draw or paint for an hour a day for 30 days in a row. Now you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, Harper. Sure, you're super handsome. You're a great artist but I ain't got that kind of time. I don't have an hour a day to draw, especially not for 30 days in a row. All right, all right, I hear you. Here's the good news about that. If you can't do an hour, 30 minutes a day is pretty great too, and you'll still see some serious improvement by the time you finish this challenge. The idea is just to dedicate a small block of time to drawing every day for 30 days, so you can get better, faster, and increase your abilities. Now here's the bad news. If you're not willing to give your art at least 20 to 30 minutes a day, you're not gonna get any better. I know that sucks to hear, but that's just reality. And reality can be a real bitchy bitch. All right, for this video series, I'm just gonna talk through each of the drawings to give a little background on tools, techniques, tips, and my overall creative bullshittery. But before I do that, here's my quick disclaimer. Most of the drawings I did for this challenge were done in 60 to 90 minutes, depending on how much time I had that day. And a few of them stretched into about three hours. Like if it was a Sunday afternoon and I could just daydream and fart around for a while. So technically you could say that I'm an overachiever. <laughs> Hashtag humble brag. Hashtag look at the vast art empire I have built. My God, it's magnificent. <laughs> Okay, let's get on with it. Day number one looks like an homage to first-year art students who harbor dark feelings of angst and rebellion, so much so that they have to include bad poetry in their art. Look at me, everyone, but don't look at me. I'm unique, misunderstood, and terribly troubled. You just wouldn't understand. All right, I'm just messing with you. These are just words that came to mind while thinking of the fall season, aka the best season. That right eye looked like a big stinky butt. So you know what I did? I cranked the creativity level up to at least six or seven, and I tore the damn drawing right in half. I know! Out of control. Guys, this shit's getting pretty cray already. Cool tool tip on this one. That's an oil pastel on top there, the red and the gray. They give your drawings a kind of blurry depth of interest or some shit like that. I don't know. Anyway, they look cool and I'm going to use them more in the future. Okay, day number two. Speaking of fall, let's break out the orange, yellow, red, and brown watercolors just to let Mother Nature know that we approve of her seasonal handiwork. Do people even say handiwork anymore? And what would the fall season, or my entire body of work for that matter, be without a hell of a bunch of skulls? I mean, can you really ever have too many skulls? The correct answer is, don't be ridiculous, of course not. I didn't bother drawing anything in pencil first for this one because it's a pretty simple, straightforward image. Actually, it's a kind of a backwards way of working for me. I started with the ink and then drew on top of that 
with a white colored pencil. I think this one took me just over an hour to make. Hey, here's something easy you can do when you're staring at a blank page and you don't have any good ideas. You can change the scale of an object. Take an object that's usually small and surprise, draw it big, or vice versa. It's a quick way to add visual interest. Or you can always just draw another skull. And now, let's take a look at day three. This guy's got a real fetish about tearing paper for some reason. <laughs> that old man's so crazy. I wanted to use the yellow paper because it really makes the heavy graphite marks pop off of the page. All right, what is that? A nose? A beak? Hmm, broken teeth? A big lantern jaw? Oh, I know who this is. It's Papa Smurf, right? Spoilers, it's Ben Affleck. Affleck! So for this one, I wanted to use a soft graphite pencil and just get all scribbly and messy. It's a helpful exercise. It's good to let the drawing get smeared and smudged sometimes. It reminds you that it's just a sketchbook and not your final art. So it's okay to make mistakes investigate new styles, and not to be so damn precious about every little drawing. And to make sure I really went that extra mile for my fantastic viewers, I went ahead and made it a little more interesting by drawing three more quick Batmans. Batmans? Batmans? Batman? I don't know. Anyway, I drew Batman three more times on pink post-it notes. I like how raw the smaller drawings are and that they kind of look like panels on a comic book page. And to finish up, I erased back into the smeary pencils to create a few fun highlights. Hey, and speaking of fun, here's a great idea. Let's roll on over to day four. So for this one, I just wanted to have some comfort food. I wanted to draw something that I've done a thousand times before. Oh, let me guess. Is it a skull? With skulls all over it? <laughs> uh, no. It's a leather jacket outlaw. He's a wolf. Or a dog. Or a chupacabra. I don't know. It's not like I was going to get reference for it. It's a sketchbook. But whatever it is, I'll tell you this much. One of the cool things about drawing and painting every day is that when it comes time to get out the pencil, you don't feel like you're so rusty. I mean, you know how it is when you miss a day or two and your drawing gets all weird and wonky. And if you don't draw for a couple of weeks, <laughs> yeah right, forget about it. You might as well be wearing boxing gloves. This dude's got a lady on his nose for a mascot, and it's abundantly clear that he does not stand for any run-of-the-mill, half-assed, steroid-injected, factory-farmed, non-organic, GMO, SMG, or mass-produced mayhem. No, sir, he's in the business of 100% pure chaos. 
You can always tell by the red pants. This is some speedball ink laid down with a number three brush and then painted over with some sweet student grade pan watercolor that I got from Walmart. Then for my try something new section, I scrubbed over it with a black Prismacolor pencil to build some quick volume with the creases and folds. It still looked a little lacking, that's hard to say. So I made some vertical pencil slices in the background and then sprayed red and black in strategic places with a toothbrush. All right, what do you say we move on to day five? That's a great idea. By now, I'm getting into the swing of things with this new everyday schedule. Each of these drawings took me a little bit longer than it will take you because I had to set up the lights and camera, yell action to myself, and then turn the camera off and on at the most photogenic times. Hmm, more torn yellow paper, huh? Yeah, hopefully that's the last of it. And it looks like I'm starting off with yet another badly drawn set of googly bug eyes. The image I had in mind for this one was just a head coming up out of the ground with cactus on it. Yeah, I don't know what that's about either. It's probably some Freudian weirdo shit. But anyway, after making the pencil drawing, I added some light watercolor washes, making sure to make the eyebrows way too dark, and then trying desperately to make those big, staring, ping pong ball eyes look a little more lifelike. But alas, to no avail. The cacti are green, that's a no-brainer, and then let's put too much makeup on the poor deer and way too much water on the paper so it wrinkles and warps all to hell. Perfect! A little blue acrylic for the background, and speaking of ground, let's make these rocks a dazzling turd brown. Presto! Magic! Can you tell that I hate this drawing? Yeah, I think it shines through in the brutal self-effacing sarcasm. And the saddest part is that it took me over an hour and a half to pinch this steaming loaf. But that's okay, it'll be over soon, and the next drawing is pretty cool. Believe me, I've seen it. Life comes at you fast. Say hello to day number six. This one was a fun exercise in creative shapes and silhouettes. <laughs> wow, that sounds like a control top pantyhose advertisement from 1957. 100% machine woven polyester fabric guaranteed not to run, snag, or bunch. How many beers have you had? It's only 9 a.m. But seriously, folks, this is a pretty easy two-step process that can really help the strength of your drawings. Because one of the major things that sets a good drawing apart from a bad drawing is the readability of the image. And most of the time, that boils down to the silhouette. Here's the standard test of a strong silhouette. If you fill in your drawing with one flat color, no lines and no other indicators, can you still tell what it is? Or at least, is it striking or interesting? Because if that silhouette looks like a big squishy blob, chances are you've got a boring drawing on your hands.
So for this exercise, it's just a matter of painting some flat watercolor shapes and then adding some simple interior pencil lines to create some character heads. Now granted, some of these are stronger than others, but you get the general idea. And spoilers, there's an airplane flying overhead, so I'm going to start this part over. Okay. And spoilers, shape and silhouette based drawing, which is very hard to say, is going to pop up quite a few more times in the next 23 days because it was easy and fun to experiment with. And here we go, marching somewhat triumphantly into day seven. I knew that I was going to soak the page pretty heavily, so I started with a coat of gesso to keep the paint from bleeding into the other side of the paper. I wanted to do a pretty simple shot of a woman with short black hair wearing a red and white striped shirt after seeing an illustration from artist René Gruot that morning. Oh, I'm sure I mispronounced his name, but that's not important. What is important is that his drawings are kick ass. After making a quick pencil drawing, I beefed up all the lines with a fat black Crayola crayon, and then I laid down some green acrylic for the background base color and promptly lost control of it. I followed that mishap up with a super sloppy skin tone that was a bad idea from the start. So I sprayed a little water on the whole thing and scrubbed those mistakes off with a cotton t-shirt sleeve. Boy, I just wish I could do that with all the other thousands and thousands of mistakes I've made in my life. <laughs> Excuse me while I weep. Hey, what say we skip right to the red stripes? I wanted to make them with a rough dry brush effect and I think they turned out pretty cool. I put the skin tone back on with less water this time and then used a red oil pastel to give her some rosy cheeks. Next, I brushed some blue acrylic straight from the tube onto the green background to break it up and help balance the skin tone. Paint the mod earring real quick, and then on to the piece de resistance. The black, shaggy, crop-cut hair. That's a mouthful. And finally, a little more color on her nose, chin, and neck with the oil pastel, blended with a finger. And there you have it, friends. The first daily drawing week is safely tucked away in the ancient record books of Who Gives a Shit. And most importantly, tune in next week to watch the next video in this How to Draw Better series. Until then, if you want even more hot sketchbook action, cool stories about art and life, and dad jokes, check out these rad videos right here. And if you thought this video series was better than looking at old photos of yourself with bad hairstyles and stupid clothes, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon so you'll never miss another sketchbook video right here on the Time Machine. Thanks for watching. You seem like a really great person.